Hi everyone, welcome to the third episode of the Hilt Mad Skill Series. In this episode, we'll take a deep dive into how Hilt works under the hood. We'll first uncover how the various Hilt annotations work together to generate code. We'll then take a look at the Hilt Gradle plugin and see how it works behind the scenes to improve the overall experience when using Hilt with Gradle. Let's start by taking a look at how Hilt generates code. As some of you probably already know, Hilt uses annotation processors to generate code. Annotation processing occurs within the compiler when converting your source files into Java bytecode. As the name suggests, annotation processors are triggered on the annotations within your source files. An annotation processor typically inspects the annotation and types to perform various tasks like validation or generating new sources. Let's take a look at some of the most important annotations that can be used in Hilt. Three of the most important annotations are Android Entry Point, Install-In, and Hilt Android App. Let's start with Android Entry Point. As a brief review, Android Entry Point enables field injection in your Android classes such as activities, fragments, views, and services. In this example, simply annotating play activity with Android Entry Point allows us to inject the music player into our activity. If you're using Gradle, you're probably familiar with the simplified syntax shown in this example. However, this syntax is actually just syntactic sugar provided to you by the Hilt Gradle plugin. We'll talk more about the Hilt Gradle plugin later, but for now, let's look at how this example would look without the syntactic sugar. Now we see that the original base class, AppCompatActivity, is really an input to the Android Entry Point annotation. The PlayActivity itself actually extends a generated class, Hilt underscore PlayActivity. This class is generated by the Hilt's annotation processors and contains all of the logic necessary to perform injection. Let's take a deeper look. In this example, the generated class extends AppCompatActivity. However, in general, it will extend whichever class was passed into the Android Entry Point annotation. This allows injection to work with any base class you want. The main purpose of this generated class is to handle injection. It's important to perform injection as early as possible to prevent accidental access to a field before it's been injected. Thus, for activities, injection occurs during the onCreate method. Note that the code here has been simplified, but it's close enough for the purposes of this discussion. Now let's take a look at what the inject method does. To inject the activity, we first need an instance of its injector. In Hilt, the injector for an activity is an entry point, and we can get an instance of the injector using the entry points utility class. In this example, the injector class is called playActivity underscore injector. As you may have guessed, this class is also generated by Hilt's annotation processors. Let's take a closer look at the generated injector. The generated injector is a Hilt entry point that is installed into the activity component. It contains a single method that allows us to inject an instance of the playActivity. If you've ever used Dagger in an Android application without Hilt, you're likely familiar with writing these inject methods directly on the component. Now that we've seen how Android Entry Point works, let's look at the next annotation on the list, Installin. As a quick review, Installin is used to indicate which component a module or entry point should be installed into. For example, here we've installed the music database module into the Singleton component. With Installin, a module or entry point can be contributed from anywhere within the transitive dependencies of your application. However, at some point, we'll need to collect all of the installing contributions to get the full set of modules and entry points for each component. Hilt generates metadata to make collecting these installing contributions easier. By putting the metadata into a fixed package, Hilt's processors can easily find the metadata generated in all transitive dependencies of your application. From there, we can use the information contained in the metadata annotation to find a reference to the installing contributions itself. In this case, the music database module. Now that we know about Android Entry Point and Installin, we're ready to take on the Hilt Android App annotation. As a brief review, the Hilt Android App annotation enables injection in your Android application class. In this regard, you can think of it exactly like the Android Entry Point annotation. However, Hilt Android App has one other important function, generating the components. Let's take a look at how the components are generated. To start, a user just needs to annotate their application class with add Hilt Android App. The Hilt annotation processor then generates a set of components inside of a wrapper class that has the same name as the application class prefixed with Hilt components underscore. If you've ever used Dagger before, these components are the at component and at subcomponent annotated classes that you normally would write by hand. Hilt then looks in the metadata package to find all of the add install and annotated classes. The add install and modules are placed in the modules list of the corresponding component declaration. The add install and entry points are placed as super types of the corresponding component declaration. From here, the Dagger processor takes over and generates the component implementation from the at component and at subcomponent annotations. If you've ever used Dagger without Hilt, you've likely interacted with this class directly. However, Hilt hides this complexity from the user. As this talk is about Hilt, we won't go into further details about the Dagger-generated code. 
However, if you're interested, you can check out this presentation by Ron Shapiro and David Baker, and they'll walk you through the details. In addition, you can check out the cheat sheet for Dagger Cogen 101. Now that you've seen how code generation works in Hilt, let's now take a look at the Hilt Gradle plugin. The Hilt Gradle plugin performs a lot of useful tasks, including bytecode rewriting and class path aggregation. Let's first take a look at bytecode rewriting. As the name suggests, bytecode rewriting is the process of rewriting bytecode. Unlike annotation processing, which can only generate new code, bytecode rewriting can rewrite existing code. When used sparingly, this feature can be very powerful. To motivate bytecode rewriting in Hilt, let's look at a familiar example. Previously, we looked at the Android entry point annotation and how it's used to generate a base class that performs injection. While extending this base class works in practice, it can cause quite a bit of issues with your IDE. Since the generated class does not exist until after you've successfully compiled your code, you'll often see red squiggles in your IDE. In addition, you won't have access to autocomplete for things like overriding methods, and you won't be able to access methods from the base class. Not only can this loss of features slow down your coding velocity, but also all these red squiggles can make it extremely difficult to focus. The Hilt Android plugin comes to the rescue by enabling bytecode rewriting on your Android entry point classes. With the Hilt Android plugin enabled, all that's required is to annotate your class with that Android entry point, and you can extend your normal base class. During bytecode rewriting, the Hilt Gradle plugin will swap your base class with the generated base class. However, as this process happens directly in the bytecode, it's invisible to the user. I should also mention that there are some serious downsides to bytecode rewriting. First, changes have to be made using low-level bytecode rather than source code. In addition, because the bytecode has already been compiled, any issues generally show up at runtime rather than compile time. Not only does this make rewriting bytecode risky, but it also complicates debugging since when something does go wrong, the source files may not represent the bytecode that's being executed. For these reasons, Hill tries to rely on bytecode rewriting as little as possible. Finally, let's look at another useful feature of the Hill Gradle plugin called class path aggregation. To understand what class path aggregation is and why it's needed, let's look at another example. In this example, app depends on a single Gradle module database where both app and database contribute installer modules. As we've already seen, Hilt will generate metadata into the fixed Hilt metadata package, which will be used to find all at install and annotated modules when generating the component. While this works fine for a single level of dependencies, let's see what happens when we add another Gradle module as a dependency of database. In this case, we've added the Gradle module cache as a dependency of database and a transitive dependency of app. When cache is compiled, although it will generate metadata, that metadata will not be available when compiling app because it's a transitive dependency. Thus, Hilt has no way of knowing about the cache module, and it will be accidentally excluded from the generated component. While you could technically fix this issue by declaring cache as an API dependency rather than implementation, it's not recommended. Not only is using API worse for incremental builds, it's a nightmare to maintain. This is where the Hilt Gradle plugin comes to the rescue. The Hilt Gradle plugin automatically aggregates all classes from the transitive dependencies of app, even if implementation is used. In addition, the Hilt Gradle plugin also has a number of benefits over using API directly. First, class path aggregation is less error prone and requires no maintenance compared to manually using API for dependencies throughout your app. You can simply use implementation as you normally would, and the Hilt Gradle plugin will take care of the rest. Second, the Hilt Gradle plugin only aggregates classes at the application level, so unlike when using API, compilation of your libraries are not affected. Finally, class path aggregation provides better encapsulation of your dependencies because it's impossible to accidentally reference these classes in your source files, and they'll never show up as suggestions in code completion. In this episode, we've uncovered how the various Hilt annotations work together to generate code. We also looked at the Hilt Gradle plugin and saw how it works behind the scenes using bytecode rewriting and class path aggregation to make using Hilt safer and easier. If you want more information on Hilt, visit these sites here to read up on the latest information and guides. Thanks for listening and keep an eye out for more Mad Skills episodes to come. Bye.